Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, I had a voice for radio, so today I am delighted that we can finally talk about Feramosa GX. We've had this image for quite a while that kind of shows us Feramosa, but we can't actually see what it does that makes me very very sad indeed great news for you ladies and gentlemen we now do have a nice clear image and a translation so ladies and gentlemen off we go now Feromosa is a grass pokemon and a basic which means you can use ether paradise conservation area to reduce damage done by 30 which is very nice indeed in terms of grass partners don't forget at the moment that Golisopod is a very widely played grass pokemon so maybe if you're playing something like Golisopod, Feromosa could fit in here as a nice partner we might get more onto that as we go through the video of course it means you are hitting for weakness against stuff like for instance greninja which will be very important as we're going to see as well as stuff like lapras for instance or lycan rock if that sees an increase in play being a fire weak pokemon is awkward with the whole ho -Oh and Volcanian, Turtonator, Salazzle thing. A lot of people are playing fire at the moment, so it's a little bit awkward. Retreat cost of one is very nice, but Feromosa is literally the fastest competitive Pokemon in the game with a speed of 151. Next up really are Aerodactyl and Tapu Koko with 130. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I am very confused as to why this has a retreat cost at all. It really shouldn't. Doesn't have a resistance though. There we go. 170 HP is about standard for a basic GX nowadays, although there are Pokemon like, for instance, Goslord and Wishy Washy, which are, shall we say, keeping things a little bit interesting. Although, do remember that the fact that you're a basic Pokemon does mean that you can use fighting fury belt to up your hp by 40 up to 210 but then again if you do that your opponent can always use a field blower and one thing that's actually really annoying is when they do 180 you're not knocked out and then during their next turn they use field blower to get a mid-turn ko always kind of annoying of course you can always use max elixir as a basic pokemon look at the top six cards of your deck if you find a basic pokemon there you may attach it to a benched basic pokemon really handy for a pokemon Pokemon like this that needs two energy. Now, the first attack on Feromosa is incredibly interesting. One grass energy, 30 damage. Meh. If you go first, you can use its attack on your first turn. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that makes it incredibly interesting indeed. Because Donking is back. Now, people use Donking in different ways. But as far as I'm concerned, Donking is where you win and your opponent hasn't had the opportunity to yet draw a card. Now, this might seem a little bit familiar because Latios came around previously with Fast Raid, 40 damage for one Psychic. If you go first, you can use it on your first turn. The thing was that being a Dragon Pokemon, Latios wasn't hitting anyone for weakness. And the second attack of Latios here was Water, Two Psychic, and a Colorless, even with Double Dragon. That was still a super awkward attack cost. It was kind of Double Dragon and Two Psychic, or Two Double Dragon. Really awkward, that was never going to see any play. It was too gosh darn confusing. But you see, Feromosa's attack here is far, far more interesting because you're hitting an incredibly relevant weakness in grass. Because you see, Froakie, 60 HP, weak to grass. You will get an easy one-hit KO with, and the attack I should mention at this stage, is called Fast Raid, just like Latios' attack was. And that means that if you go against a Greninja and they flip over a lone Froki, as long as you've got an energy, you win the game there and then before your opponent has even been able to draw a card. The true donk, ladies and gentlemen. And that's really, really awkward for Greninja players. Now they can play Talonflame. But even if they play Talonflame, they've got a just under 50% chance of starting with it. So there's no guarantee they'll start Talonflame. And if they're playing 4 Froki, 4 Talonflame, as a lot of decks are, then essentially, in roughly half their games, they will start Lone Froki 
And if they go second, so roughly one quarter of their games, all it's going to take is Feramosa with a single energy to take it down. And that's really interesting. But then again, it's not just Froki here. Because if you pop a Fighting Fury belt on Feramosa, you're doing an extra 10 damage to anything. You then add a Professor Kakui, you're hitting for 60 damage on turn 1. And let's not forget nowadays that we've got Tapu Lele. So all you need to do is play something like an Ultra Ball for a Tapu Lele, Wonder Tag for that Professor Kakui, and you could be doing 60 damage on turn 1. Now at this stage it's all getting a little bit more awkward, because we don't have stuff like Shaman anymore to draw cards, so you need to have Feramosa in the active or a way to get your active out of the active, something like a float stone or starting with a free retreater like Tapu Koko. Then you need to be able to have your Tapu Lele to get the Kukui or an Ultra Ball or something. And you need to have the Fighting Fury belt. Okay, bit more to it. But if you can pull this off, ladies and gentlemen, you've now got 60 damage on the first turn. Alolan Vulpix is played in a huge amount of decks. 60 HP, you can KO it and win the game there and then before your opponent draws a card. Decks like Metagross will be playing Beldum, who has 60 HP. Decks like Gardevoir will be playing Routes, who has 60 HP. I'm not saying this is going to be easy to pull off in every single game, but I am telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that Feramosa now brings in the very realistic possibility of winning on the very first turn of the game before your opponent has even drawn a card. And let's face it, in the next couple of years while Feramosa's legal for tournament play, Froki may not be the only 60 HP basic weak to grass that we get. And I know we've spent about, you know, seven minutes to this stage, but that attack is so interesting, we needed to sit here and go through all the possibilities. Second attack, two grass energy, 60 damage plus confusion. I'm not a huge fan of this because it's quite low, but there is a use. Now, as I always say with confusion, Espeon GX has been proving to us that confusion still has a place nowadays. Your opponent goes to attack, flip a coin, if tails, they take 30 damage and the attack fails. Fun fact, you used to have to flip for confusion to retreat, but that is no longer the case. Now what I really like here is the number. 60 damage, add a choice band, you're then doing 90 damage, that's a 2 hit KO on stuff like Darkrai, Drampa, Tapu, Bulu, etc. But, and I've said this many many times in many many videos, if you can't get a 1 hit KO, get a two hit KO with disruption. So even though you won't be one hit KOing, I think anything with this, that's okay. I mean, other than your 60 HP basics, that's okay because you can still get that confusion. Something like a Gardevoir will often put a whole bunch of energy on to try and take out your GX Pokemon. So what you can do is confuse them here and then they have to do something like play a Guzma to switch to the bench and then have a Pokemon they can retreat just to get around this confusion. And that makes it a very interesting Pokemon indeed. More interesting than Espeon because you're hitting much better numbers. The problem, of course, is that it's for two energy. Now, Max Elixir helps greatly, but I don't know if 60 plus confusion is good enough for two energy. This isn't a bad attack. It's a very useful attack. It's just not amazing, so to speak. And finally, the GX attack. This attack does 50 damage for each prize card your opponent has taken. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is really good. And the surprise factor here is really good, where you can just go Feramosa, Max Elixir, hit for big damage. Because we see this, this is the inverse of Salazzle. Salazzle is a really good Pokemon in terms of attacking, although Salazzle is not a GX attack, it's just a regular attack. 50 damage for each prize you have taken. So after you've taken four prizes, Salazzle's really good. You're doing 200, 230 of a choice band. Well, Feromos is the opposite of that. If your opponent takes four prizes, all of a sudden, you've got a Pokemon that can hit 200 damage and can do it 
for two energy. But it's actually better than Salazzle. Because Salazzle, there's no point taking five prizes and hitting 250, because if you've taken five prizes, you need to knock out a low HP non-GX to win. Here, however, if your opponent has taken five prizes, they haven't won the game, but you're hitting for 250 damage for just two energy. 280 if you add a choice band on there. And that's enough to KO anything. Guzzlord, with its ridiculous 210 HP, not even an issue. Gardevoir, 230 HP, add a choice band, your opponent's taken four prizes, you KO. Even something like Metagross, which comes up with a ridiculous 250 HP. If your opponent takes five prizes against you, you can then come in with Feromosa and get a one-hit KO to potentially win the game. But you've got the surprise factor here. So your opponent might not see this coming. You can just go Feromosa, Energy, Max Elixir, and drop it as a surprise. The second attack here, 60 damage plus confusion for 2 energy is very meh. But the first attack bringing actual donks back into the game has got to be interesting. And a GX attack that can potentially win you the game from behind is too gosh darned good. I really, really like this GX attack. You've got to use it right, and maybe in the late game your opponent will play an N, and you won't be able to find the cards to do what you need to do. But you could drop this as a surprise to take your final KO, and I just think it's got to be worth playing with. I really like Feromosa. I'm going to give Feromosa four Wossies. Maybe it's too generous, but I just think this is fun and worth a test. But ladies and gentlemen, as always, I really want to know what you guys think about Ferramosa GX. Chuck it down in the comments. Go nuts, be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. That's where the live action happens. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus pods, etc., you can do so at patreon.com slash ptcgradio. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.